right? Tuzi good. Tuzi good. You say it very slow. Yeah, too. I want to be sure I'm right. Is that Look at that sweet motor home down there. So that if anything mean and nasty came up behind them, they could run up the ladder, pull the ladder. Even up. if you were going to your next door neighbor, you had to climb your ladder to go out, walk across the roof, and climb his ladder to go in. Now my wheels in motion and my windows open with the wind blowing in my hair. I'm driving down the highway, gonna do this my way. I can feel it in the air. Here I go. Look at that sweet RV over there in the campground. Tuzigut archaeological site. Did I say that right? Tuzigut. Tuzigut? You say it very slow. Yeah, Tuz, I want to be sure I'm right. <laughs> so we're at this archaeological site, which I guess in the 1930s was just a, a hill, and they started digging and found all this um, settlement, I guess it would be called. Ruins. Which, yeah, ruined settlement. So uh, we're going to go check that out. It's part. It's a national monument, so your national park pass gets you in. And if you don't have one, it's ten bucks a person. Let's go. Let's go have a look. Time to borrow today. Well, something's got to give today. Oh, how it all got buried? It got <laughs> buried because of, of of the nature. So they used all the natural mud and clay and everything right. from the riverbed to build this. Yeah. And so when they abandoned it, within months, it the just fell clay down. and everything started deteriorating. The wind would come, knock over the rocks and everything. Well, once the clay deteriorates, it becomes uh, dirt. Right. And then we got grasses growing, trees growing on it. I see. They create more dirt because of their growth and the leaves dropping and all that type of thing. So it was all a natural process. It was almost 800 years between when it was abandoned and when they started the excavation. Um, Here's the marsh. They used that for foraging and cordage and you know food source as well. They had the river over here. They put 70 acres of farmland along the river. They kept their farm along the river because it's uh, closer to the water. They didn't have to carry any water. Their irrigation ditches could be short. So they kept as much as they could that 70 acres next to the river. For example, the mythology is uh, it tells us that the Sonoman Indian women built the dwellings. 
because the mythology says that if the women built the dwellings, then God would bless the dwelling. But if the men built the dwellings, he wouldn't. So the men of the culture would build temporary shelters and the women would build permanent shelters. Mm -hmm. So imagine the women working together to lay these stones, to make the mortar and put them into place. Anthropologists do have done research and they say there's scientific uh, backing on this that says that the men would go out, you know, if they needed one or two rooms, the men would go out and collect all the rock, all the wood, all the mortar, clay, whatever. Um, they would collect it all until the women, you know, women working together, women said, okay, we got enough. And they believe that the group of women could build that size room in, in one, uh, two days, in two days. <laughs> Look at that sweet motor home down there. <laughs> And so while you're here, I'll point out a few things to you if you have the time. Sure. So first are these rocks right here. These rocks form what we call a plaza fire hearth, a rather large fire. They found more than 17 of these uh, uh, plaza fire hearths, these large fires. Now the belief is, the anthropologists believe, that they always had fires going because it was hard for them to create a fire in, in that time period. So they always had fires going 24-7. Sentinels used them during the night and everybody else used them during the day. They were very communal, so almost all their meals were done as a community. Mm -hmm. They had wash water always warming on the fire, so it just constant. And so here we have one that's been, been uh, that's the way it was actually found and left in place. So this room here, 120 rooms on this Pueblo, 15 of them being second story rooms and no doorways. Well, with the exception of one. Southwestern Pueblos were built for defense. So they were all built with an uh, opening in the roof, ladders on the outside, ladders on the inside, so that if anything mean and nasty came up behind them, they could run up the ladder, put the ladder up. So there was no doorways. Well, why in the world was there this one? Well, the archaeologists, when they found it, were just going, wow, we're amazed. And so they did further work in this room. And they found out this room had never been lived in, never had any fire in it, and the only artifacts found in that room were ceremonial artifacts. So what the anthropologist believes is since this is one of the last rooms built, and it was built at the end of the plaza where they did all their ceremonies, that they probably left this door open here so they would aid them in doing ceremonies, uh, ceremonies, bringing their ceremonial equipment in and out without having to climb any ladders or anything. So They accessed every room by the roof. That's correct. Even if you were going to your next door neighbor, you had to climb your ladder to go out, walk across the roof, and climb his ladder to go in. No, so no interior. Door. That was from predators or that's attackers of other tribes. Well, that's or... because they came from a very long line of warlike people. For more than two thousand years before they came into the Verde Valley, 
their ancestry were fighting. They were fighting cousin to cousin, brother to brother, as well as cultures to cultures. And so they were always fighting. So they always learned to build in uh, defensive ways. And when they moved about the year 100 AD, they moved from the Four Corners area with their ancestry. And they went ahead and moved over to the San Francisco Peaks. And they started building there and they decided they were going to be peaceful. They were going to be dry farmers. But the only way they knew to build was fortresses. So they built, when they came to the Verde Valley, they built this way, the cliff dwellings, the cave dwellings, the pueblos, because that's all they knew to build. It was their tradition, so that's the way they built. And it really aided them because the interior of the rooms in the summertime are 25 degrees cooler than the outside. And during the wintertime, depending upon anybody in the room or any fire, it could be anywhere from 20 to 50 degrees warmer on the inside. Yeah, we noticed the, the room up on the hill yeah, the was quite a bit cooler. And you notice how the, with the doorway even is still quite a bit. Mm -hmm. It's still, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I wondered if the, if the lack of windows and doorways was to stay warm also so you don't get well, the draft. Well, that was part of the benefit, but yeah. at the same time it really was because they didn't want anybody to putting arrows or spears in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why I always building for defense. So. We do know that a lot of times when the weather was nice, they would sleep on their roofs or sleep out in the in the field. Oh, really? uh, they do a lot of work on their roofs. They made their roofs two foot thick so that they're very strong. They could work on them, walk on them, do everything like that on top. Of them. Then, of course, you probably saw a bunch of the matates. Matate is just an ancient Spanish word meaning grinding stone. And so you found a lot of those uh, grinding stones, matates. 300 of them were found here, more than 300, when they did the excavation. And along with them was more than 1,600 manos. The manos were the hand stones the women used to grind whatever they were grinding on. A matate like this one represents hundreds of hours of grinding because the matate would start out relatively flat, and then it would take hundreds of hours of grinding to get that concave shape. Wow. And so a woman uh, would get one matate when she was somewhere between the age of 11 and 13, when mom and dad thought she was mature enough to be an adult. But dad would go out and find her a grinding stone and mom would take her out and select the manos and then they would go to work. Every woman had at least two manos. One for corn, one for beans. And then they would get more manos if they felt like they needed more manos. All right, thanks for all the info. Well, sure, thank, thank you, so you for visiting us. Enjoy your day. You too. The time is now. It's now.